Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Sunday School on this last day of January. It is January 31st, 2021. So I hope you all had a wonderful January and we are looking forward to February here at the church. We've got some fun things planned coming up. So I want to real quick remind you of the things that we have coming up so that you don't forget next Sunday, February 7th, a couple of exciting things. One, it is Super Sunday. So we are um, collecting soup donations for Hawkeye Harvest Food Bank. So feel free anytime this next week to bring cans or packages of soup to the church and we will donate those um, the following week to Hawkeye Harvest Food Bank and we want to have a super Sunday so bring as many um, cans or packages of soup as you are able to able to give and so we can have a super Sunday and then we can go home and watch the Super Bowl and have a super time with our super family it's gonna be super and then also next Sunday even better we get to welcome you back into the church. And so we are going to resume in-person worship and in-person Sunday school. Um, we are going to start having meetings at the church. The only thing is that we can only have up to 10 people. Um, so I want you to call me and let me know or send me a message on Facebook or you can send me an email here at the church and let me know if you plan on coming to Sunday school so I can make sure we don't go over the number of 10 that we're supposed to have. So give me a call or send me a message when you click like on the video to let me know you're here this morning. Just shoot me a quick message and say, Lisa, I'm going to be there for Sunday school on February 7th. Yay, I'm so excited. I am so excited to have you guys here with me. It's going to be so nice. I am going to continue to do Facebook Live also. So for those of you who are not quite ready to come back, um, that's okay. We totally get it, and we're going to we're going to continue to be on Facebook Live also. So that's coming up, and then on, and also next week I'm going to be um, busy driving around at everybody's house because I have some Valentine surprises for you all. Um, just a little something that I threw together for for all of our kids in um, <clears throat> all of our younger kids in Sunday school and our families who have been active in the church. So if you have been participating in any of our missions we've had going on on Facebook or or anything we've had happening here at the church and you want a Valentine bag for your kids, again, let me know. Let me know because I want to make sure to to get a special treat out to your special someone as well. So, yes, lots of good stuff going on in February. Today, however, we have a little bit of a leftovers from our storm going on. So we are having a shortened Sunday school class today because it's just Pastor Carol and I for worship this morning. Um, Brian and Mary drive in from North Springs, and so they're not wanting to make that drive today with the snow on top of the ice, and I can't blame them. So it's just Pastor Carol and I, and then um, John is coming in to do the sound for us. But other than that, that's going to be it for, for our worship. So i got to get up to the sanctuary. So after all of that gibberish, let's get started, shall we? So today... Um, we're going to talk about one of, of the stories that Jesus told his disciples. Um, and Jesus told a lot of stories to his disciples when he was teaching them. He used these stories, parables, they're called, as a way of teaching people, as a way of teaching his disciples and others who gathered around him. Um, Jesus used the parable form of storytelling to teach spiritual lessons. The story for this week is a parable told by Jesus about God's kingdom and how God's kingdom grows. And we are a part of that story. That is so exciting. He compares God's kingdom to two very tiny things. And we're going to hear about those tiny things in this story. Sometimes we imagine the kingdom of God as being a place in time in the future, so something that we're looking forward to. Jesus said 
God's kingdom was here on earth right now. Right here, right now is where God's kingdom is. Jesus encouraged his friends then and us now to make sure that we are working to bring about God's kingdom today. Anywhere the followers of Jesus, that's you and me, are doing God's work and living as God wants them to live, the kingdom of God is present. So as long as we're following Jesus and living the way that Jesus wants us to live, the kingdom of God is alive and present with us right here and right now. Isn't that awesome? That, and that gives me so much hope. That gives so much hope. Sometimes when the world gets really crazy, I know that the kingdom of God is alive and well with me and with you and with all of us right here and right now because I'm trying to live the way that God wants me to live. And Jesus loves me for that. Well, he loves me anyway, and he loves you anyway, no matter what. Okay, so Jesus used the parable that we're going to hear about today to emphasize that small beginnings can turn into huge results, okay? From one small start, God's kingdom becomes a force for good. When we follow Jesus' teachings and live the way God wants us to live, great and amazing things can happen. What began with a handful of people following Jesus now has so many followers, it's hard to count. It's hard to count that. We can change the world into God's kingdom one small act at a time. One small act of kindness at a time. And we can start to make some changes in the world today. All right. So let's hear that. Let's hear our story today. The parable is told um, by Jesus in Luke chapter 13. And I have it marked in my Bible. And I'm using the deep blue Bible. Maybe some of you have this. I know we've given some out. So it's chapter 13, verses 18 through 21. So it's not very long at all. Growth of God's kingdom. Jesus asked, what is God's kingdom like? To what can I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in a garden. It grew and developed into a tree, and the birds in the sky nested in its branches. Again, he said, to what can I compare God's kingdom? It's like yeast, which a woman took and hid in a bushel of wheat flour until the yeast had worked its way through the hole. Interesting. So Jesus said that God's kingdom is like a mustard seed, and yeast. Now, I don't have any yeast with me, but I have used yeast when I've made bread before, and it's super, super tiny. It is so super tiny. And when you make the bread, you get this little ball of dough, but in the with the yeast mixed in there, you set that little ball of dough aside and you cover it up, and then you go to check it a little while later, hours later, and it's a big ball of dough. And then you can bake it. And that happens because of the yeast. And I'm not a scientist. I'm not a professional baker. So I'm not going to try to explain how that happens. But that little bit of yeast makes that bread dough grow and grow and grow. And it is the coolest thing ever. The mustard seed. I happen to have some mustard seed here. And I, I had pictures to show you. But I think they're up in my office. The mustard seed. So here... I don't know if you can see that. Those are that's a bunch of little mustard seeds. This is one little mustard seed. And that little mustard seed in one of the pictures that I had was about eight foot tall. The plant, the mustard plant, was about eight foot tall. So that would be as tall as me plus three more feet. Okay, I'm, a I'm just a little bit over five foot. So that's tall from that tiny little plant, from that tiny little plant. Do you guys like mustard on your hot dogs, ketchup and mustard, or just ketchup? Sometimes I like a little mustard. Sometimes I even like a little relish on my hot dogs. It just depends on what's all available. 
All right, anyway, the point is that from that tiny little seed grows this huge plant. Same with um, sunflower seeds. Have you ever seen sunflowers? They are massively tall. They are so tall. And the sunflower seed is just this tiny little seed. It's bigger than a mustard seed, but it's still super small. And it grows into this huge plant with this really big flower on it. Sunflowers grow really, really big. I have a friend who grows sunflowers, and she loves sunflowers too. And they are huge, all from that tiny little seed. So that's what Jesus compared God's kingdom to, was like one of those seeds. It starts really, really small. So maybe you're walking down the street, and you, you see somebody, whether you know them or not, and you smile at them. And they smile back. That person might have been having a rough day and you smiled at them and that felt good to them enough that they smiled back. Maybe they didn't feel like smiling before that. That tiny little mustard seed of a smile of yours was enough to grow in their heart and produce a smile in them. So it became bigger. You see, one small little act of kindness can change into something bigger. You help to make somebody feel better just from that tiny little act of, of a smile. So that's the same with God's kingdom. When we share about Jesus' love for us and Jesus' love for others, and we live our lives the way Jesus wants us to, loving God and loving our neighbor, right? Being kind sharing, being honest, those kinds of things. When we, walk, when we live our lives like that, it makes a big difference. It helps people know that Jesus is alive and well in our world today. We can bring God's kingdom into the world right where we are, right here and right now. So yeah, we can bring God's kingdom right here and right now. Not some distant, far-off future. So, with that, I have an activity for us. So, I, I didn't post them again. Oh, my gosh, you guys. Well, I have them in my phone ready to post. So, as soon as we're done here, I'll post the activity sheets. But one of them is going to look like this, and the other side looks like this. So there are two different posts for you guys, okay? But what you can do is cut around on these solid lines. Mine, on this one, it's perforated. So I'm just going to punch one of these out real quick. And what they are, they're birthmark or birthmarks. Oh, my goodness. That's so funny. Bookmarks. They're bookmarks, okay? And so I have some crayons here. I have, I have a little bucket of crayons. And you can just color your little bookmark, not birthmark, but bookmark. And I should have had one colored, but I didn't. So you can color your, your bookmark. Okay, I colored the, tr the trunk of my tree. And look, there's a little seed. And from that little seed, that big tree is going to grow. And you can even maybe draw a bird's nest in there. And maybe there's a squirrel over here or something. Maybe you can put a sunshine up in here. You can do, you can decorate this however you want. And then on the other side is where is when that other sheet comes in. So you'd have to figure out how to do that. <laughs> you'd have to double side print it is, is how you'd have to do that. And parents would have to help you with that. Or you could just write it on there. And it's it's the two of the verses that I read. Jesus asked. What is God's kingdom like? To what can I compare it? It's like a mustard seed that someone took and planted in a garden. It grew and developed into a tree, and the birds in the sky nested in its branches. And that's from Luke chapter 13, verses 18 and 19. So that's what it's supposed to say on the back. But even if you just do the front, and then you could write Luke chapter 13, verses 18 through 19 on the back, and somebody could look it up but you can give this as a Valentine. Or you could slip it into a Valentine card for maybe grandpa and grandma or aunt and uncle, and then they could have that for a Valentine gift. 
or you could keep it and put it in your favorite book that you're reading right now because I know that you guys are all reading some awesome books right now. So that's one activity that you guys can do. And there's three of them there, okay? So you have, you can maybe keep one for yourself and give two away. You can give them all away. You can keep them all. You can do whatever you want with them. So that's one of the activities that we have. Our faith word, let me get back to that. Our faith word um, is include, right? So we've been talking about including others. And it means to welcome all of God's children in God's love. Because God loves all of us. He created all of us in him, his image. And he wants us all to be a part of his kingdom. So, what do you think we need to do to help God's kingdom grow? What are some things that we can do right here, right now, to bring God's kingdom on earth? One of the things I said earlier is love God and love our neighbor, right? The two greatest commandments that is what Jesus said is to love God with everything that we have. All of our hearts, our minds, our thoughts, our words, our deeds, our everything. And then to love our neighbors as ourselves. These are the two greatest commandments and everything else hangs on them. All the other laws hang on those two, according to Jesus right? So that goes to everybody. Other things that we can do, we can share with other people. So maybe if we have extra, we can give to those who don't have enough, right? We can be generous and giving. We can be helpful and, and serve others, um, do chores around the house, pick up our room, those kinds of things that we don't really want to do, but it's stuff that we want to do for sure. All right. Oh, Pat, and Carol says, um, popular birthday presents. Yes. Mustard seed bracelet. Oh, yeah. Cool. I remember those. Mustard seed bracelets. They were very cool gifts, Carol. So what else do we need to do to help God's kingdom grow? How about treating each other with kindness and respect? Yeah. We're, we're all different. We all have unique talents and gifts. Yeah. Okay, so there's lots of different things that we can do. We can we can be nice to each other. We can, even though we might disagree with someone, that doesn't mean that we can't still be friends with them because we all have we all have different things that that we're good at and that we that we like to do. Okay, let's see. So. The kingdom of God is anytime and anywhere the followers of Jesus are doing God's work and living as God wants them to live. So that means that God's kingdom is like a community, and that includes everyone, like we talked about. So be on the lookout for those ways that you can bring God's kingdom into your life right here and right now. All the different ways that we said, and maybe there's some other ones that you can come up with. And feel free to share those in the comments. Let me know you're here. Like the video, comment, hey, Lisa, I'm with you. And don't forget, we're going to be live and in person next Sunday, February 7th. We will be resuming in-person Sunday school for up to 10 kids. And we will be resuming in-person worship. Um, masks are required. And so we just ask that you have a mask. We do have some available if you don't have one. So don't let that stop you. And I will post the activity sheets as soon as we're done here. And then I'm going to get up to the sanctuary and help with worship. So stay safe out there, everybody. Love you guys and have a wonderful week.